So good to be in the house. Praise God. His presence so beautifully flowing here already. This time of worship and praise. Thank you, gentlemen. You know, as you're being seated, I want to show real quickly, just show those two videos back to back. One is going to show the overview um, a little more in depth of what God's done these 20 years. I want to speak out of some of that, just run them back to back. The other will show a little bit about team trips. In 1998, John Smithwick established JSMI Global Ventures when moving to Peru to conduct crusades. The next step for John's journey would be through a lifelong friendship through his new mentors, Jerry and Marilyn O'Dell. Because of the O'Dells, his heart for the world grew deeper as he learned how to take crusade ministry to the next level in reaching the unreached. John married Martine and this expanded JSMI Global Ventures in kids ministry and further reaching the younger generation. God opened up many doors and as John and Martine traveled throughout Europe ministering, they formed a relationship with God TV after sharing on their flagship program. Later, this sparked a TV show that Global Ventures produced which captured everyday people traveling overseas and experiencing God's power and miracles. In 2002, the ministry was further expanded by forming missions trips to equip people to reach the lost far and wide. It was shortly after this that the name Global Ventures was formed. Now, over 2,300 people have come on a Global Ventures trip to 25 countries. These trips have helped increase impact around the world and even launch new endeavors, such as the Thailand Harvest Plan. This has been in effect since 2005, creating sustained impact by planting churches with an evangelistic long-term strategy. Currently, 42 churches in various nations have been planted where follow-up ministry is needed most. In 2015, Global Ventures moved into the center of mass evangelism with the help of faithful partners who rallied to make this dream a reality. In 2007, Global Ventures implemented an internship to train harvesters on how to effectively reach the masses. For over 10 years, we have been doing so. It has since been revamped as the core program with a vision of training many more to go above and beyond in reaching the masses. Fall of 2015 was our biggest overseas event in GV history, Converge Nepal, an initiative that covered a whole nation with the gospel at such a pivotal time. With everything that we do, our vision is to have lasting impact for Jesus. Through mass evangelism projects, church planting, and discipleship training, Global Ventures wants to transform whole regions of the world in the days ahead. I go out on Global Ventures trips because everything is always done with excellence. There's structure in place, but they don't just stick to a formula. They allow room for the spirit to move. They prepare you, they love you, they want you to succeed. They train you to be a success. And everything is put together. You don't have to worry about where you're sleeping, what you're eating. None of that is a concern. And what really attracted me to Global Ventures was their passion and love for the unreached, the people have never heard the gospel, and also the passion of the leadership involved in Global Ventures. You know exactly what's coming next. When you go there, you are going to make an impact on somebody's life. Whether you are a team leader, or whether you're somebody who's on the first trip, everybody has an equal part in the ministry. Uh, everybody gets a chance to pray for people. Everybody gets a chance to lay hands on people, minister to people. I was very shy and was always withdrawn from speaking in front of people or just even holding a mic. But Global Ventures gives you that confidence and they empower you through God's word to reach those people no matter how big the crowd is, no matter how small the crowd is. When I went to their schools, I could feel, I could sense the love of God through me to going towards the people. It's like God wanted to reach the, those people so much. The thing that's impacted me the most about GB trips are the miracles that we see in both street ministry and the family festivals. I've seen blind eyes open and chronic pains just vanish. I prayed for this sweet lady in Cambodia who had been deaf for years. And when I clapped behind her to test her hearing, she could hear me perfectly. On trips with Global Ventures, like we go into schools with like hundreds of kids, sometimes thousands, 
and just seeing the size and the amount of people that are hearing the gospel, most likely for the first time, a lot of people are being reached in a short time. And it's just like a short and sweet moment just for Jesus. You know, I believe that God just, I just believe he loves it when he, when he sees like his people just getting the job done. You don't have to be the perfect Christian. You don't have to have everything figured out. You don't have to be, you know, knowledgeable of all of the scriptures. That's, that's not how it works. You come to the country, you come on a trip, and the Lord does the rest. So if anyone even has like an inkling or a small desire, whether they're unsure or not, to go on a trip, just know that this is what missions is all about, is preaching the gospel, and that's what happens on a Global Ventures trip. Amen. We in the body of Christ, are in the destiny changing business where people are headed down the road of darkness, despair, and ultra destruction. We are the ones to stand right in the middle of that road as the light bearers of heaven and say, follow me as I follow Christ and shine forth his glory, his power, and his miracles. I wanted you to see both videos because everything in the first video that we saw God accomplish took the supernatural. We are, you are, supernatural beings. Everything took a step in the supernatural, a step of the spirit, a step of faith, a step that denied the odds. Amen. Listen, we're unconventional. The way we did this, people said, well, save your money, set it aside, buy video cameras. Then eventually if you get funding and you can put together this aspect, storyboard and all of that, uh -uh. We knew God had called us to put together a TV show. We knew heaven wanted, recorded on video, miracles as they happen. Us standing down voodoo priests and witch doctors and sharing the love and the power of the gospel. We knew miracles at the hands of everyday people needed to be captured and needed to be put on TV. So man, I grabbed 0% credit cards and I got the cameras and we went out and made it happen. <laughs> I know I heard Financial Peace University, you guys run that, praise be to God. Sometimes though in the kingdom, faith doesn't do it, A plus B equals C. Sometimes God will take you from A and jump you over B, C, D, E, and F and have you hit M, N, L, I mean the whole gambit because he has a plan. And I'm not talking about being foolish. I'm talking about operating out of the inspiration of the supernatural inside you. The scripture says you don't have to be just taught of man. You have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. I knew years ago I had to get a guy into the country, Peter Ratcliffe. We, uh, Pastor Philip and I were talking about it, about to drive over here, Brother, Phil, uh, Brother Peter, who's now a full-time missionary. He and his family have like five kids, wife and Five kids down in Paraguay, they're building churches, they're reaching villages. God had him working at God TV. Before that, we had met in Peru, and he had left God TV. And he said, I've got a severance from leaving. All the Lord's told me to do is to come join up with you as long as my tourist visa will allow. And I said, well, we're going to get you longer than that. Well, do you know what? He was denied. He, they didn't have five at the time. I think they were, they had three in the the third one was a little baby. They were denied at point of entry in the United States of America. Long story, but they tried to be real transparent. We did too. We thought we could get them beyond just a, a three-month visa. And they got a, a, an agent there at entry that was just persecuting them. And basically was welcoming Muslims. Well, so good to have you here, Mr. Mohammed. Come on in. And was scowling at them as they waited in containment to be flown back to England. In the natural, it was done. They were stamped as deported on their passports. They couldn't get back in to the United States of America. But don't you know that we are more than what the natural realm says? We have a supernatural dwelling on the inside of us that when the natural realm and highest authorities you know it means business there 
in Hebrews 11 when it talks about, and they subdued kingdoms. Listen, in our authority, we can break through rulings, we can break through decisions, we can break through what man says impossible, what government agent says, it's not going to happen. I began to take authority. I got, of course, Martine and I united immediately. These were not just people that were going to come and work for us. They were dear friends. They had put it all on the line. There was no backup plan. There was no plan B. Do you know you need to get yourself to where there's no plan B? Just plan A all the way. God's supernatural plan. These 20 years, we wouldn't have seen the over 2 million souls saved if there had been a plan B. Oh, I'm going to cop out here and just go do this side or that side of working. I come from entrepreneurs. No. I burned all my bridges. I said, this is what I'm doing for life. Some of you, not just some, many in the room, have been ushered into a new place. We've entered a new era. And the things that God has written on your heart to do are not going to be done by adding A plus B and doing basic arithmetic. It's going to be supernatural. You're going to have to step out in ways that don't make sense to your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your boss. You're going to have to tap into heaven's flow that's already in you. It's there for you to do. When that happened, I said, we're not going to tolerate this. We got a hold of my mom and dad. We got a hold of one other lady that we knew was a prayer warrior, and we said, bombard heaven. We're not going to take no for an answer. I'm going to get a hold of that agent, and I'm going to talk to him. Do you know I called American Airlines? We had flown them in with air mile tickets, and I got a hold of an agent we could not find the agent after I talked to them, but that agent told me if that officer, immigration officer, will reverse his decision, we will reimburse the tickets and fly them back, even though they've been used going, coming, we'll fly them back to America. When I got him on the phone, I'm not going to say his name, he actually was a believer that was persecuting us because we believe in the supernatural. He named a bunch of names of large ministries that believe and flow in the supernatural and said, oh man, that's probably a scam like this one, that one, other, and you're going to get over here and it's going to all fall through as you go to work for this supposed ministry, saying that to our dear friends that had put it all on the line. Of course, they knew that was hogwash. They'd been with us in Peru. They'd seen the miracles. They set up Catholic churches in England where we walked in and saw miracle signs and wonders, priests and nuns being healed by the power of God. I'm talking awesome stuff. Maybe we'll share some of those miracles. They knew we were the real deal. That's why after leaving God TV, after they had done supernatural things and helped God TV build their headquarters in Jerusalem, the number one thing they knew they were assigned to do was to come help John and Martine Smithwick in Global Ventures take the gospel to the far four corners of the earth. I knew we had to have them, not just in leadership, that was a huge part of it, but in this thing, this show that God had called me to birth. I never produced a show, but I knew, bless God, Peter's worked with God TV. We're going to get him here. We're going to make it happen. God will show you not only the steps to take, but the people to contact and reach out to. Don't ever underestimate the power of supernatural relationships. There are no Lone Rangers. None of us get it done alone. We need each other. That's why we are a body. And when the body is fitly connected, divinely in place, oh, watch out. God's going to throw a death blow over and over and over again to the plots, the sinister plots of the evil one. He's already defeated and under feet. Amen? <clears throat> but he does try to, you know, scheme. He does try to play his games. And he has to be reminded where he's put, underfoot. Amen? Amen? So I got on the phone and I talked to this officer and I was genuine, I was transparent. And I said, sir, we believe in supernatural. We believe in miracles. We believe in healing. But I'm the first to tell you, I am I, my own ability, my humanity, I can't heal a gnat's wing. I said, but God can. And we've seen him do it over and over and over again. But above our love for the supernatural is our love for his integrity, his, his holiness. I said, God, as my witness, we live for integrity and doing things the right way at Global, JSMI Global Ventures. And you know, something in that phone call, 
it was the authority and dominion that we had stood in and the transparency and just going straight on at it he said if Americans said that they said they'd fly him back in here if I change this decision he said all right the next flights when he said I'm not on duty but I'm gonna tell the whole staff that's here that they'll be flying in at this time and that we are reversing our decision you call American Airlines you say I said it I'll send a, a little email to secure it and you can forward that on to them and you know what by the power of God the supernatural that which could not have happened should not have happened was done Amen. hallelujah <clears throat> Peter went on and helped us get on uh, our first Christian networks. That was supernatural. Run for free for years. Just one quarter of bills. Just from one Christian network. That's very well known. We're talking Daystar. We're talking TBN, their youth network. Uh, God TV. And the list goes on. Just one of those networks, they'd send us their bill. And it was marked paid in full. We didn't have to pay a dime. It was hundreds of thousands of dollars. God's got some great things for each and every one of you. And he's called you to lay hold on it by walking supernaturally in his spirit. Miracle signs and wonders, yes, they are healings of the body. But some of the greatest miracles you're going to see are things of this nature. You've got to have one in order to have the other. If we hadn't been able to position ourselves going to the nations, doing these things, so many people would have never been touched with the healing power of God. <clears throat> I shared this morning about the big Nepal nation-taking event, Converge Nepal. If the TV show had never gone on the air, there would never have been a partner's daughter down in the state of Louisiana. She was in her 30s at the time had really gotten on fire for God she started coming out on our trips she was touched by the healing power of God flowing and seeing all the souls that were saved it was actually in Thailand let me just say this if God stirred your heart while you saw the team trip video sign up don't let anything talk you out of that next step amen but if we hadn't gotten on the air we wouldn't have connected with that that young lady she wouldn't have connected us to her father <clears throat> Her father was from Baptist, good Baptist background, good brother. Wasn't too familiar with the supernatural. He went from being not too familiar to carrying me down <laughs> to his chiropractor's office because the chiropractor's wife was pronounced two different debilitating diseases that the expert said, you for either one of these diseases, you're going to die in a wheelchair even if you didn't have the other the previous one would kill you or vice versa wouldn't kill you but cause you to die in a wheelchair crippled unable to walk the rest of your life I said I'll go down and I'll pray for her the reason he got bold and that way is because he had a tumor forming in his lip and in his living room I laid hands on him instantly it dissolved by the power of Jesus he started biting his lip movers and shake they move and they shake yeah. Hey, what are you doing Monday morning? No, I'm doing this with your schedule. All of a sudden, he had me going down there. I said, yeah, I'll go down. <clears throat> she had managed to get on crutches. We sat her down in a chair. She was a believer. Her husband as well. Prayed for her and then lifted her up by her hands out of that chair and began to walk down their hallway without crutches, without a wheelchair, and then we let go, and her hands went up, and she was magnifying Jesus, walking up and down the hallway in front of nurse, receptionist, her husband sitting there. <coughs> this old Baptist boy talking about my partner, he was hooked. He said, man, I want to go on my first mission trip. He said, I don't want to just do any trip. I want to go see you share with one of them witch doctors. And I said, well, and I named his name. I said, if you want to see a witch doctor, you need to probably come to eat that year we were going to Ethiopia. I said, I can't guarantee it, but come on, that's probably the one. Got on the ground, and man, he had his large Samsung there filming <laughs> as we went up against this witch doctor. Guy was named um, Abra, like Abracadabra. Wow, well, figure that. He had gotten rich. He decided being a Muslim wasn't going to make him enough money, so he went into the dark arts. 
and would tell people's fortunes and actually call this evil spirit from the mountain across the country to come in him. And we got there. He didn't know we were believers at all. And um, I said, why don't you show us your power? Oh, no, it takes me days of preparing and fasting. And so we started turning the tables, talking about Jesus. All of a sudden, he got real, oh, I've got to go. I've got to oversee my workers in the field. And this guy, this, you watch the Ethiopia episode, it'll bless you. This guy, he's sitting there grabbing a smoke outside his huge complex. He has three or so houses. I mean, you know, in Ethiopia, you'd have three houses. To have one house built of stone, rock, masonry, unheard of. But to have three, I mean, you're doing well because of all the profiteering he had done, doing the dark arts and channeling the spirit and all this. And uh, here he was grabbing a smoke, and I told him, see, we don't have to wait and call our God from the mountain and fast. And do it. He's in me. He said he'd never leave me nor forsake me. Listen, the supernatural is in you. It is always there. You can always tap into the Holy Ghost on the inside of you to raise you up and propel you beyond whatever the obstacles are. He will give you supernatural insight, supernatural wisdom. He'll show you beyond the veil of flesh where you see and you know people's hearts and motives. Oh, we need this in this day and this hour. And my friends, you possess it. If you listen to him, you yield to him. You go the direction he says go, even when doesn't make, don't listen to your mind. Oh man, the spirit of God and the supernatural is so far beyond the intellect. That's why it's taking these steps that don't make sense at times, but you know that you know that God's saying do it. All of a sudden, a giant has fallen right before you because you dared to step out with a sling and a rock. And you're taking that giant's head off with his own sword. That's the authority and dominion that we walk in, in Christ Jesus. We are sons of the Most High. John 14, 12, the works that I do, you'll do also in greater works because I go to the Father. Do you know why he said that? Because we would be sons just like him. When he'd go to the Father, salvation would have been exacted for the very ones he was talking about. So they would no longer be just servants and friends. They would be sons doing what he did and then some because he ushered in the new connecting and bridging the old to it so they could have it just like he walked in and then some. Amen. Praise God. These things are so real so real there's been times that god's dealt with me to raise my hand in the air when a storm threatened crusades and in one moment it went from storming and electricity having been knocked out to instantly the heavens being sealed that happened in thailand another time it was a huge if, if you tune into our podcast you'll hear some of these stories uh talking about the spirit-filled life and the holy ghost and how he helps us the holy spirit Man, we need to be ever aware of his presence, his leading, and his power in us. But it was a, a huge tsunami weather pattern. CNN was covering. It was going to hit Mindanao Island. And God literally alleviated a whole weather pattern. And God is my witness before you. I'm going to be very transparent about this. That time he didn't tell me, raise your arm. That time I literally didn't think about it because I had mentors that had told me we've been able to stop weather in a small geographical area to preach a crusade but never huge patterns that cover you know a country or a whole segment of a country I thought man this is this huge weather pattern and God dealt with me as I was sitting changing clothes one that morning going out and this weather pattern was ominously just engulfed us I mean we had to make the decision to move the crusade inside and all of this because schools have been flooded, roads have been washed away, bridges. And God dealt with me. I am the God that parted the Red Sea. I saw that picture from the old little cartoon, Prince of Egypt. My kids had just watched that recently. They were much younger. And how the lightning flashes and you see the large fish in the water. And, and I, would, I said out loud, duh, yeah, you're the God that parted the Red Sea. All of a sudden when I went down to meet the team for breakfast... It wasn't raining anymore. Sun was out. Do you know I still didn't put it together? I went out for ministry and I had a long sleeve shirt. I changed to a short, short sleeve and I thought, well, this is the eye of this hurricane thing, this typhoon. 
And then we went up into the hills to minister that day, and it was sunny up there, and I thought, well, the eye must have shifted this direction. And then we went back down to the coastal little city that we were in, Depolog, and then it finally hit me. You know, eight-hour day, and there's no rain, clear skies. One of the greatest harvests we had had were one of the greatest atrocities just a few provinces over had taken place where a huge massacre of precious people had happened while we were on the ground. But where evil and sin doth abound, how much more does the grace and the glory of God abound? We have authority and dominion. At the end of that week, Peter, the same Peter I'm talking about, he was running the budget. He was our international crusade director at that time. He wore a lot of hats. He said that night after all the crusades were done, we went back outside and the crowd exploded in so many salvations. We tallied it up. And for the 58 that were brutally murdered and just as the crow flies, probably just a couple of hundred miles at max away there on the island that we were on, it was almost a thousand salvations per death that had taken place. I mean, it was a monstrous number, over 57, almost 58,000 born again. In the midst of, listen, we're living in the day where there's going to be great calamity. I'm not going to sugarcoat this thing. There's going to be great calamity. There's going to be famine. There's going to be wars. There's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be issues. Oh, but the earth is groaning and wanting the sons of God to appear. Let's open up our shirts and say, a son has done gotten here. We're going to manifest the glory of God. We're going to have heaven. Well, old Abra was right outside his own little fence, taking a smoke. Here he was, too rushed, having to leave. He thought we would leave real quickly, but we noticed hobbling out of his property was a guy with a makeshift kind of cane. Looked like he had had a stroke many, many times. They don't have the medical attention they need when they begin to go that direction. And sure enough, he was partially paralyzed in his arm and couldn't walk right because of his leg, having to drag it. And um, <clears throat> I figured, hey, what a great opportunity. Abra knows this guy because this dude was on his property. He's coming out of his gate. Let's just minister to him. So my translator grabbed him. I said, come on, right here. The camera, ro cameras were rolling and uh, just began to share that Jesus wanted to heal him. Laid hands on him, commanded life and healing into his arm. He shook my hand with a strong grip. People that are stroke victims and haven't rehabbed properly can't do that. You could tell before he couldn't do that. He raised his arm all the way up. He looked. Then I started walking back and forth, walked him around. He was walking. He wasn't just dragging that leg. He had lifted that leg up and was lifting it high, march walking. His eyes had gotten big. He gotten happy. I said, do you want to receive Jesus? This Jesus is your Savior and Lord. He said, if it's a Jesus, it just healed me. And my arm and my leg, yes, I'll receive him right here, right on the spot. Come to find out, that was Abra's older brother. What Abra in the dark arts had never been able to do, Jesus in one moment did right before Abra's eyes. <clears throat> that business partner that I was telling you about from Louisiana, he was so excited. He said, oh man, now this guy's a multimillionaire. We're going to get back. I got to get a hold of Phil Rolerson down there, Duck Dynasty. Get a hold of him. He gets talking. He said, this is the newest, latest A&E show. I know what it's going to be called. John Smithwick, Witch Doctor Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? we hadn't been obedient, if we hadn't stepped out into the supernatural, we wouldn't have met him. We wouldn't have seen his chiropractor's wife instantly healed by the power of Jesus. He wouldn't have come to Ethiopia. He wouldn't have seen God move in those ways. And then he wouldn't have been the number one underwriter for Converge Nepal. Financially, he stepped up to the plate huge to help underwrite massive pro those massive projects across the nation that cause that precious land wasn't until just a few months ago, back uh, September, October, standing in my office, we had welcomed a guy from another ministry. This ministry targets unengaged, unreached people groups. And he heard my story about Nepal. I was there with another partner. And he said, I wasn't going to show this to you until you brought up Nepal. 
And uh, you went in 2015, okay, we went in 16, 17, did these trainings for targeting these unengaged, unreached people groups. He said this was the map before all these red dots of unengaged, unreached people groups. He said, you went in with your nationwide blitz. We went in, began to target. He said, he pulled out another sheet. There wasn't one red dot all over it. He said, every unengaged, unreached people group is now being engaged with the gospel. My partner that was standing beside him jumped back and said, oh my goodness, John, Global Ventures was the tip of the spear, taking the gospel into one of the most unreached nations on the planet. It took walking supernaturally, despite public opinion, despite Christian opinion, despite even those that were in full-time ministry's opinion. We had a guy out in western Nepal, had a large network of